Last week on October 16th, we watched Bitcoin jump from just below 28K all the way to $30,000 in less than 10 minutes on the release of a fake report by Cointelegraph. That fake report was going to be the BlackRock ETF apparently finally launching. Then late Monday night on October 23rd, we saw prices absolutely destroy resistance and hit $35,000. All of this explosive price action has come from an excitement about the incoming Bitcoin ETF. It has gotten a lot of people in interested in the prediction of what will be in fact happening when these ETFs are finally approved. Now while no one can give the exact number of when the bull market is going to top, in this video we are going to be diving deeper at the surrounding circumstances as well as how much money could actually flow into Bitcoin's price action. To help you better understand just how significant these ETFs are and why this bull market just might be the most explosive one yet, it's time to discover crypto. Now before we get too far, let's make sure we lay the basis of what an actual ETF is. An ETF is a publicly traded investment vehicle that tracks the performance of an underlying asset or index. This is different from a stock because stocks only track the price action of one company. ETFs are a popular way for investors to get exposure to the value of an asset like gold or oil. They usually trade on traditional stock exchanges and their value should rise and fall when the asset increases or decreases in price. Now the first ETF launched all the way back in 19. 1993, and they quickly became a popular way for investors to invest into a basket of assets all at once. More than likely you have heard of this ETF, it's called the S&P 500. When you purchase the S&P 500, instead of buying shares in 500 separate companies, the singular ETF lets you gain exposure to all of them combined all with one purchase. While we have had Bitcoin futures ETFs for a while now, which allow investors to trade future price action of Bitcoin, the news is currently flooded with stories about Bitcoin spot ETFs. A spot ETF is where a centralized entity like BlackRock purchases a large amount of Bitcoin, but then allows other investors to use the stock market to invest in Bitcoin at specific price and also take profit. But the Bitcoin would always belong to BlackRock, not the investor. Effectively, you could invest in the price movement at Bitcoin at any given price immediately without having or ever worrying about actually holding that crypto yourself. So if you ever heard of the phrase, not your keys, not your crypto, BlackRock is essentially going to be holding and purchasing all of your crypto for you. Now, for those of you who are currently holding Bitcoin and have learned about the advantages of self-custody, you might be asking why wouldn't the masses as well as the institutional investors just buy their own Bitcoin? Well, while it seems like that should be simple, it actually can be a little complicated. While I personally would always advocate for self-custody, there are a couple of reasons that somebody would prefer an ETF. One of the biggest reasons is gonna be just because of regulation, but they also may just not want to have to deal with the risks that come with and all of the burdens of self-custody ownership of a spot Bitcoin. An ETF would be approved by regulators and managed by a firm that would buy and hold the Bitcoin on their behalf. So they have nothing to worry about at all. In July of 2013, the Winklevoss twins with their Bitcoin trust filed for the first Bitcoin ETF proposal ever in the United States. Yes, 10 years ago. It was rejected along with every other subsequent proposal for years. Then came along the ProShares Bitcoin Strategy ETF, and that became the first Bitcoin futures ETF available in the United States on October 19th of 2021. The purpose Bitcoin ETF used the trading ticker BTCC and made its debut in Toronto in early 2021. According to its issue purpose, Investments Inc., this ETF invests directly in physical slash digital Bitcoin. And that's where things stand of as today. As I said before, there is a Bitcoin's futures ETF available on the US market, but not yet a spot Bitcoin ETF. But if the SEC does and has approved a Bitcoin futures ETF that claims to be investing directly into Bitcoin, then why hasn't it approved a spot Bitcoin ETF just yet? Well, that's the question. I think it's shocking that we don't have a better answer to that question. Nobody really knows. There have been a lot of applications, several rounds of frustrating congressional testimony by his ugliness, dark Garth Gensler the vague, but none of this has actually ever yielded anything concrete other than a reluctance to allow Bitcoin to further integrate into the existing financial system. Now, Gary Gensler, everybody's favorite human being, got his start at Goldman Sachs. And there has been a lot of speculation that Gary Gensler wants to become the secretary of the treasury after Janet Yellen. This would allow him to do the bidding of his old buddies on Wall Street. 
In other words, he's deliberately stalling while trade fi bankers scramble up to catch up and bring the market centralized options to compete with Bitcoin. JP Morgan, for example, deployed its JPM coin for corporate clients in Europe in June of 2023 and has been rushing the rollout of its Onyx coin systems to the market. Now, no one can actually say for sure, but from the outside looking in, it sure seems like something corrupt is going on somewhere. I mean, it's never like JP Morgan's committed market manipulation in the past. Now, the SEC is currently reviewing applications for spot Bitcoin ETFs from the likes of BlackRock, Wisdom Tree, Invesco, Galaxy, Wise Origin, Vanek, Bitwise, and Valkyrie Digital Assets. They recently delayed all of these again, but they are going to have to either finally approve or deny many of them by March of 2024. Oddly enough, this falls very close on the calendar to the estimated date of the next Bitcoin halving, which is currently projected to take place near the end of April 2024. And even more interesting, during a panel discussion on ETFs at CC Data's Digital Assets Summit in London, former BlackRock Managing Director Stephen Schoenfeld Field, and I don't know if I'm butchering that name, who now serves as the CEO of Market Vector Indexes, predicted that the US SEC will approve a spot Bitcoin ETF within three to six months. Another ex-BlackRock director, Martin Bednow, now the CEO of Jacoby Asset Management, speaking at the same time at the same event, said that he also believes the SEC will approve all of these Bitcoin ETFs together. Now, this is to avoid any signs of market manipulation and make sure that BlackRock's not looked at as the favorite from the SEC. But if the approval of all these spot ETF syncs up with a 50% reduction in a new issuance of Bitcoin, that could provide the basis of a very powerful bull run. A huge drop in supply combined with a vast amount of new capital entering the Bitcoin market and generating demand. But how much demand? How much are we really talking about? And how much would the price actually move? Well, the combined market caps of these firms is around $17.8 trillion. Yes, that's a lot of capital. The assets under management in all of this is hard to capture exactly because companies like Vanguard, State Street, and BlackRock all have leaders who sit on each other's boards and they all effectively own each other in some way or another. Now, this makes it pretty hard to precisely estimate. However, going back to Stephen Schoenfield, who may have mentioned before, says that his analysis suggest spot ETFs could lead to an inflow of 150 to 200 billion dollars into Bitcoin, specifically into investment products over the next three years. Now, Bernstein estimates that the crypto fund management industry will grow to over 500 billion dollars of assets in the next five years. And then there are lasered eyed maxis like Michael Saylor who think that Bitcoin is just going to go to infinity. So what's realistic to expect in terms of inflows? And how much would that move the price of Bitcoin? Well, again, this is tough to say, but in March of 2021, Bank of America published a research note with some interesting observations on this subject. They claim that, quote, Bitcoin is extremely sensitive to increased dollar demand. They claim that it would take at least $2 billion worth of inflows to move the price of gold by 1% and over $2.25 billion to move 20 year plus treasury bonds by 1%. Thank God we print money. But Bitcoin was much easier. The analyst said, we estimate a net inflow into Bitcoin of just $93 million would result in a price appreciation of 1%. He also added, looking at detailed blockchain records, we find that the largest addresses have not been selling in aggregate since the beginning of the pandemic. That was back in 2021. And since then, whales have continued accumulating and supply held by long-term Bitcoin holders has hit an all-time high. So the supply of Bitcoin is still decreasing and Bitcoin is still very sensitive to increased spot demand. So let's have some fun and do a little bit of moon math. If we're looking at investment firms with a combined total of $17.7 .7 trillion of assets, let's say that they move just about 1% of that money into spot Bitcoin. That would be about $177 billion worth of new capital inflows into spot Bitcoin. Using Bank of America's estimate of about $90 million to move Bitcoin up 1% in price, that would mean that in one year, the price of Bitcoin would rise a little bit over 1,900%. Now at today's price levels of about $34,000 per Bitcoin, a 1,900% increase over one year would put Bitcoin comfortably over the $640,000 price level. That to me seems wildly bullish and way too high. And I want to emphasize that there's a lot of estimation and assumption going into that calculation, but there is no guarantee that these spot Bitcoin purchases are going to be market orders and directly impact that price. And there's no way to know how much selling might be done once these numbers start to run up. Still though, there's no denying that the mass approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs combined 
combined with a new Bitcoin halving would bring about a huge increase in demand alongside a huge reduction of supply. Very similar to what we saw in 2004 November when gold launched their ETF in the November of that year. But that's just what I think. Let me know down in the comments how you think all of this is going to play out. Will the SEC approve a spot Bitcoin ETF or continue to keep them shut out of the market? And how much money do you think institutions are going to be bringing into Bitcoin once the ETF actually gets approved? Or do you think secretly they're already accumulating? That's all I got for this one. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel to keep yourself educated on all things crypto. That being said, I'll see you all at the top.